This is uh, Steve Fillmore with Local Live. I'm joined this morning by Keith and Sarah of the Clean Plate Club. Uh, how are you guys doing this morning? We're doing great, Steve. Good. How are you? Good morning. It feels good to uh, be back on the track. We haven't, obviously with COVID, we haven't been able to, to get on here too much um, with food trucks not being allowed, but we missed her. So we're happy to be back here and talking to you. Excellent. We first noticed you when you were down at the East Falls Farmer's Market. Uh, so. I know there's other people out there that would like to know something about you. So can you just give us a little bit of background about Clean Plate Club and how it came to be. Sure. Um, so we're actually a husband and wife team. Um, we met at Johnson and Wales University. Um, actually, the first day of orientation, uh, before school even started, I walked onto an elevator that, that Keith was on. McNulty Hall. Um, I don't even think I asked his name, but we started talking. And, and the rest is kind of history from there. And that was I think. 10 years ago. So, yeah, we haven't been able, well, I like to say I haven't been able to get rid of him since. Excellent. So, we've been here for about three, three years, years now. Three years, yeah, in August. Living in East Falls. Um, we love it there. It, it's our nice little uh, close enough to the, to the main part of the city, but not too close. That's kind of our favorite point. Um, so, about the food truck, we always we wanted to open something that was ours. ours. You know, and food trucks are great because there's kind of a low barrier financially to kind of get it going. Here we are. We opened August 10th. Yeah, August 10th of last year, our opening party was actually at Wissahickon Brewing. Um, so right in East Falls. We actually live right next door. So In the Gypsy Lane it was, condos. It was nice for us because yeah. we figured uh, if if we forgot anything at home, it, it, was, it was our first <laughs> shot. So we, we were right there. Yeah, I can run up the hill if we forgot anything. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's dangerously close. We, uh, as you know, we are also in uh, Gypsy Lane uh, and love the fact that it's right there on the Wissahickon. Uh, the gorge obviously is amazing and having yeah. that ability to access a, a huge park, but also to walk down the hill and get a couple of beers every now and then is a, is a nice amenity. Definitely. And over the train. So where does, um, where, where does Clean Plate come from? So it's kind of just a nostalgic factor for us, but our parents used to say to us, since we don't keep our menu um, constant and it's always changing, we didn't want to pick anything that was too like specific to too a certain niche. genre. That's great. So uh, you, uh, when we were speaking, you talked about how with the recent uh, uh, COVID restrictions, you guys have had to sort of pivot. So could you tell me a little bit about that pivot and a little bit about some of the businesses you're working with? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we kind of from the beginning started our business plan with an idea to sell um, some retail items to breweries and local stores because in Pennsylvania, you can't really serve liquor without having snacks. Um, and a lot of bars and local breweries and places are serving like bags of potato chips, popcorn, and and stuff like that, but nothing really um, that had like a local flair or was like you know, crafted um, to be theirs. So we started these granolas and pickles um, a while ago, probably a couple months after we launched the truck, uh, but we didn't really have time to put much energy into them because we got a little too busy too fast. So one of the good things about that's come about is we've had the chance to kind of ramp up production and get out to new um, artisans that we can work with. Right. So um, we, off of the truck, we a lot of times serve our fried beer pickles, uh, and those came about because of the beer pickles that we make. So basically, we take beer and substitute the water in our pickle recipe for beers. We have some here to show you while Keith kind of talks about some of the breweries that we're working So with. early on, we, even before we had the truck, I went to Wissahick and Brewing and talked to Luke, who's the head brewer there. And I was like, listen, let me sit with you for 30 minutes and just pitch you what we're talking about, what we're thinking, and see if it's a good idea. And he was, you know, very gracious and was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So uh, one of the things we talked about was like, would you guys like to do like a beer pickle? You know, we wanted to, and granola, so we wanted to pair it with, as sort of like bar snacks is like mm -hmm. what we're thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of grew from there talking about like what are their interests what is like what's Luke's favorite pickle he loves spicy stuff right right so our, we came up with um, their spicy refrigerator beer pickle that actually 
we've we've changed the beer in here a few times based off of like what they have on what tap have, and what they're what's brewing. Gonna work. So it's generally a, like a hazy IPA. This one is Hail Mary IPA that they have on tap right now. Okay. Um, um, and uh, the spice comes from red chili flakes and habaneros. Right. So we do that for them, and then we also started working with other local breweries. Um, we work with Attic Brewing as well, and we just their their favorite pickle is a spicy dill. So this is new, brand new. It this might one. not even be there by the it's time we're talking yet. about this. We, oh. This might be some insider info. It's a scoop. We've got a scoop. <laughs> this here. is a good one. So they're they're yeah. We just gave them a tester of this. Wow. So their favorite pickle is a spicy dill. Uh huh. So we went for. Oh, oh man! Chili exactly. flakes um, and fresh garlic, and that's made with their G Town Shredder. Um, so you know, which is their each pickle, pickle is is very different. Uh -huh. Exactly. Correct. Yep. So each pickle has like a completely different profile just from the beers that we're using. Um, so it's cool because. They're, they're kind of like, I don't want to say collectible, but they're different to like each place that sells them. Mm -hmm. So the pickle the pickle at Attic Brewing is different than the pickle at Wissahickon. Right, so we're trying to pair with people. What do they like? What are their beers and what's going to work? Right. And, it's um, and then much. we also sell we also sell them recently to Nouveau Market, which is obviously an East Falls market. Um, so they have a few varieties in stock. Um, and then a little outside of these falls, but Herman's Coffee grocery items at their coffees over in, like over in Pennsport yep. um, for their Herman's customers Herman's. to pick up, like as they're just getting coffee. And so they carry them as well, um, okay. which is it's really kind of cool for us to be able to sell them in all different places across the city. And it kind of works into your seasonality approach as well. You're changing the beers depending the pickles depending on what the beer is at that current time right exactly so yeah we started out with the hick with i think devil's pool and we've done a few devil's other varieties pool. there too um and it it changes constantly which is kind of cool and they're you know they're very open and a lot of these people who have you know like breweries are just very you know like artistic people by nature they want up this is another one that we did with them oh wow is a uh, bloody mary garnish pickle wow so we came we came up with a recipe for like a brewed wow. bloody mary that uses their beer in the bloody mary um and then those are kind of like inspired by the new orleans style uh bloody mary that has like 85 toppings on it my favorite it's more of a meal than it is a drink <laughs> so you got all the toppings in there to kind of finish off your bloody mary which is kind of cool and then the other retail product that we have is our granola uh, which again started out early on, but we came out with two new flavors since COVID started, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, so the granola that one started out as like a true blue bar snack. So it kind of comes from the idea of like peanuts on the bar, and from the fact that you know breweries use so much spent grain. Um, you know, how can we utilize that product and make a product that's mostly that? So we're actually like sort of making a dent in it. You know, because the thousands of pounds of spent grain they go through, you know, after months and months is staggering. Yeah, so we came up with our first flavor that we originally came up was the um, a Chinese five spice, which Chinese five spice is like a nice, warm, um, savory spice that has all different notes to hit. So we figured that was an interesting place to start because there's just so much depth to it already. Um, and that one has like peanuts in it, which came from the original like peanuts on the bar. Right, peanuts idea. On the bar. Um, and so that's probably our most savory flavor that we have. Uh, and that that sells um, again at Attic Brewing. They have it. Um, Wissahickon has the Nouveau granolas. Market. Nouveau Market and also Th Thunder Mug um, Cafe down in East Falls sells the granolas as well. These two guys right here are sweet flavors. We have a coffee craisin beer grain granola and then a chocolate coconut sea salt, um, which is our newest, but I think probably our most popular yeah. already. And we, we started savory because we were like, well, how do we take granola, which is, you know, known to be sweet as like a bar snack. So that's where we started with the Chinese five spice. But then people asked us, why don't you guys make a sweet one? Because they want to put it on their yogurt in the morning, not necessarily drink it with a beer. And it just yeah. opens up new, right. new lands. Right. 
And uh, are the, not only the granolas, but are the pickles also available online? So the pickles aren't available online because we can't really ship them um, refrigerated. Yeah, not in like a great way. You can only really get them in East Falls in one spot um, Outside. in Pennsport. So it's pretty that's, exciting. That's neat. As uh, speaking of attic, they're make your own kits. Could you tell us a little bit about those make your own kits? Um, that's the part part of the pivot that we were talking about, you know, due to um, coronavirus. We, we've had to kind of rethink what we're doing. Obviously, for a while, food trucks weren't allowed. Uh, right now, promoting these like 80% of the prep work. maybe 85. Um, and weekly, we changed the menu. So we started with a risotto. We've done a mac and cheese, um, a quinoa fried rice kit. And this upcoming week, we're actually doing a make your own gnocchi kit. Uh, and then we have pickup available at Attic Brewing and at Herman's Coffee um, on Fridays. So the pre-order is through our website. There's a link that you can click. And then on Friday, um, with your beer or coffee, you can kind of go pick up a meal kit. And then you can make, we like to say, from, from our truck to your kitchen, um, you can make these minutes in like 15 minutes or less. So we try and do everything we can to make it a nice, easy 15-minute meal for you but also, you know, reserve the things that can be last so they're the best. So like in the gnocchi kit, for example, we hand make the gnocchi and blanch them off and then you're gonna sear them at home just so they're nice and fresh. Right, so this week's kit is, um, it's handmade gnocchi. We're pairing it with some arugula, some ricotta, a little bit of lemon zest because it's somewhere between spring and summer right now, right? Um, so we want it to be like a fresh, bright meal. And some Parmesan. And some Parmesan cheese. So it kind of has a little bit of a bite to it, but it's nice and light and fresh. It's not a, a huge, like, heavy dish. Heavy dish, yeah. Um, and then we have a couple different options of either, like, sausage, chicken, or a caprese mushroom stack that you can pair with it. So to kind of round out the meal. Um, and they've been doing really well. It's exciting to hear customers, like, be able to cook on their own and kind of take what, what what they've known or what they've grown to love from the truck and realize that they can cook it at home as well. Okay. And uh, so to get them, you go online? Is that how you place that order? <clears throat> right. Correct. So um, if you go to our website, uh, it's www.thecleanplateclubtruck.com. Um, there's going to be a, like a little picture of the weekly menu. So like this week, it's a picture of all the ingredients that go in the gnocchi and it says pre-order, click here. Uh, and you click on that and it takes you right to the form where you can order from. And then um, you're pretty much good to go. You just come and pick up. Could you tell us a little bit more about uh, beyond uh, the farmer's market, other sort of local farms or uh, artisans that you deal with to, to source some of your foods? Wherever we're at, we like to work with that person. So when we're at Wissahagen Brewing, we're using their beers and um, beer batters to finish sauces to cook meats. Um, when we're at Herman's Coffee, one of my favorite things to do is uh, we make a... a barbecue dry rub for our wings um, and when we get there they grind me four shots worth of espresso and we mix that fresh into the rub so it kind of plays off of their ingredients same thing when we do pancakes or french toast kind of special we use their espresso in the maple syrup because straight Herman's espresso mixed with maple syrup and you can't lose. <laughs> we work with a Philadelphia um, like small family-owned bakery uh, called Wildflower Bakery, right. and people really love our egg sandwiches, and they'll compliment us on our egg sandwiches all the time, and I like to pass the credit right off to Wildflower Bakery, because we crack an egg and, and melt some cheese, but the bun is what makes that sandwich. Okay, well, once again, this is uh, Local Live. This has been Keith and Sarah from the Clean, uh, Clean Plate Food Club. Thank you very much for sharing, uh, Sarah, taking some time with us. Thank you, Yeah, Steve. thanks so much.